On today's show, Nissan officially delays the launch of its Aria SUV because of the ongoing chip shortage, one that Elon Musk says is similar to the Lou Roll shortage of last year. A new survey suggests that interest in the Ford F-150 Lightning eclipses interest in the Tesla Cybertruck among regular consumers. And Professor Jeff Dahn and his team at Dalhousie University secure six million Canadian dollars of grant funds to further EV battery development. These stories and more coming next. This is Ecotricity's Ecotech Roundup show from New Zealand's only Carbon Zero certified renewable electricity company. We only source from wind, hydro and solar and we're the leading supplier of electricity to electric vehicles in New Zealand. Switch today at ecotricity.co.nz. Welcome back to another roundup in the world of clean cars and green energy. Thanks for joining me. We start today with the sad news that Nissan has officially confirmed its upcoming Aria electric SUV will suffer a delayed launch due to the ongoing global microprocessor chip shortage. Like pretty much every other automaker out there, Nissan reacted to the global COVID-19 pandemic by changing the number of computer processors it had ordered from suppliers, while the electronics industry, which had an increase in chip demand due to more people working from home, increased its orders. The result, like most automakers, any subsequently tweaked orders from Nissan, was pushed to the bottom of the pile. Nissan says it will now begin deliveries of the Aria in Japan this winter, but those in Europe, North America and China will have a longer, and as yet unconfirmed, wait time. It wasn't so long ago that Fiat's then CEO, the late Sergio Marchione, was begging customers not to buy the 2012 Fiat 500e in North America because Fiat Chrysler was losing thousands of dollars on each compliance car it sold. But now, in a world post-Covid and post-merger, with PSA to become Stellantis, Fiat is setting itself a goal of becoming the first legacy automaker to become fully electric. Brand boss Olivier Francois told Autocar this week that between 2025 and 2030, Fiat will slowly phase out all internal combustion engines across its global lineup, being 100% electric by decade's end. Given that some markets, including the UK, want to ban all new internal combustion engine sales by that point, we're guessing Fiat won't be the only automaker to set itself that goal. When Ford first unveiled the Mustang Mark E electric SUV, it got a lot of flack from Mustang loyalists, who maintained that the four-door plug-in would never be a true Mustang due to its form factor and its drivetrain. But now it's official. Ford's making and selling more Mustang Mark E's globally than its internal combustion engine Mustangs are. Moreover, the Mark E's popularity is helping Ford experience a growth in market share. Right now, Mustang Mark E production is only 1,800 vehicles higher than Ford's ICE Mustang production, but it is a start. I should note, however, that Mustang production has been impacted by the aforementioned chip shortage, so that may be playing a part, but it's certainly good to see EVs trumping ICE. It's 18 years since the last Concorde flight landed, and in that time, we've heard plenty of companies promise supersonic flight, but none actually made it happen yet. Only in the last few years have supersonic flights started to look like commercial realities again, with United Airlines announcing this week that it wants to buy 15 Overture supersonic craft from Boom Supersonic for use in its fleet. But as a new study by NASA and MIT shows, supersonic flight isn't going to do anything for a cleaner, greener world. The study showed that CO2 emissions could be between 4 and 10 times higher per seat kilometre for supersonic aircraft travelling at 2.2 times the speed of sound when compared to a current subsonic planes. Sure, it might get you there quicker, but can we really deal with a high emissions jump? I don't think so. When Ford unveiled its F-150 Lightning electric pickup truck last month, there was a lot of interest from potential owners. In a few days, Ford had managed to exceed 70,000 pre-reservations, myself being one of them. That, of course, pales into insignificance compared to the pre-orders that Tesla has received in the same time frame for its Cybertruck. In fact, right now, Tesla has several orders of magnitude more reservations for Cybertruck than Ford has for the F-150 Lightning. Many, I'd guess, from Tesla and EV fans. Yet a study this week by market research firm Pipsy Say suggests that the regular car and truck buyers think that the F-150 has more appeal than the Cybertruck. 
Surveying just under 28,000 Americans, the Polestar discovered that not only 25% of respondents said they plan to buy an electric truck in the future, but 32% say they are most impressed with the F-150 Lightning, followed by 24% for the Tesla Cybertruck. The truck war is on, and frankly, we're all going to be winners. Results from the world's largest vehicle-to-grid trial suggest that vehicle-to-grid technology could seriously save consumers money, especially when the costs of associated hardware needed to make V2G possible drops. The trial, which took place in the UK, found that V2G participants could earn upwards of £725 sterling every year for just keeping their EV plugged into the V2G system. Moreover, the savings offered were far higher than they were for a simple single-direction smart charge system, where cars only charge during off-peak and excess generation periods. Right now, the cost of V2G hardware for the home is still a tad on the expensive side, £3,700. But the survey concluded that if economies of scale could reduce that to just £1,000 sterling, the payback for most customers would be below five years, with no noticeable strain on their vehicle's battery packs. We think it's pretty obvious by now that Hyundai is eager to get as many people behind the wheel of its brand new Ioniq 5 EV as possible, especially after some of the troubles that plagued the automaker with its Kona Electric. And this week, Automotive News reported that one of its executives has stated that the company is looking at what amounts to be a three-month try-before-you-buy setup. Essentially, you'd sign to pay a lump sum subscription for three months' worth of use, insurance, maintenance and charging in order to see if the car suits your lifestyle and needs. Then, at the end of the subscription period, you'll be able to hand the car back, buy it outright or set up a lease. I think this proves that Hyundai is confident its Ionic 5 will be a popular car, but it could also terribly backfire if customers aren't as impressed as it hopes they will be. If you live in a major city and you don't have access to off-street parking and charging, or you just happen to be super busy and are driving into an unknown town, finding a place to charge can be a bit of a bugbear. But if you're in LA, San Francisco or Dallas, you'll be able to make use of the new charge-up service now being offered by Spark Charge. It's developed a mobile battery bank charging solution, which means for $25 a month, you'll be able to book a mobile charging valet session. Spark Charge's charge-up team will arrive at your home, office or wherever your car happens to be parked, and it will fill your car up with electrons using its portal rapid charging solution. We're digging down on the details and charge up if you're watching. We would love to try it out next time we're in the Bay Area. Professor Jeff Dunn and his team of world-class researchers at the Dalhousie University in Canada are among some of the most important battery researchers in the world. It's their work that's helped Tesla and other companies bring lower cost, more energy dense, more reliable lithium ion batteries to market. And this week, Professor Dan and his team were celebrating a new 2.9 million Canadian dollar research grant from the Natural Sciences and Engineering Research Council of Canada, as well as an additional 3.1 million Canadian dollar grant from Tesla to help them develop the next generation of advanced batteries for EVs and energy storage projects. It is the largest grant the university has ever received for this type of research and will be used to develop lower cost batteries that have a longer lifespan, a higher energy density, are safer to store and use, and use more sustainable resources than today's design. Frankly, I think we should all be very excited about this one. As the world struggles to reduce its emissions, we've seen some pretty unique solutions proposed for mass transit, personal transport, and yes, even air travel. Global shipping, which does represent a significant proportion of global transportation emissions, is also a big problem for a society trying to reduce its carbon footprint. So far, we've seen hybrid oil tankers, electric container ships, and the most excellent ocean bird, fully enclosed sail-powered cargo ship from Walenius Marine as proposed ways of reducing emissions of shipping. But now we have a new design to add to the list, courtesy of Michelin. It's been busy using its knowledge of tyre technology to design and prototype a concept cargo vessel that uses inflatable sails and telescopic masts to aid in travel. Sadly, it would be a hybrid. The sails would reduce emissions and increase efficiency by about 20%. But given a large cargo ship can admit as much as 50 million cars worth of emissions, well, it's a major step in the right direction, if it ever reaches production. And finally, we have covered all types of alternative fuel 
orphans on this channel, including hydrogen fuel cell cars powered by cows, reformed methane from biomass digesters, and yes, even a bus powered by reformed gas from human poop in Bristol, UK. Because Bristol. But now we can add a new one to the list, a Hyundai Kona EV owned by Urban Utilities in Australia. Its name? Number two, aka the SPUV. According to the pun-filled press release, the Queensland Australia Utilities' new ride is the second electric vehicle to join its fleet, and powered by biogas from sewage treatment, which is fed into a congeneration unit at the Oxley Wastewater Treatment Plant in Brisbane. While the car can drive several hundred clicks on a charge, it might take each person a while to generate the power they need from their daily bathroom habits, as apparently one person's daily waste is enough to travel just under half a kilometre. But you know, given how much toxic waste is being generated by the Australian government towards EVs, maybe that's one way of fueling a cleaner revolution in Australia. And on that note, we are done for the day. Make sure you hit the notification bell so you don't miss out on our next episode. And if you haven't already switched, please do consider switching to New Zealand's only Carbon Zero certified renewable electricity company. It is super easy to make the switch. And if you do, you'll help New Zealand wean itself off dirty energy and onto clean green power that will keep the land beautiful for generations to come. I'll be back soon with more great videos for you all to enjoy. But until then, I'm Nikki Gordon-Bloomfield. Kakite. See you next time.